for a history you won't forget and an experience you'll always remember. Visit the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History with engaging educational programs, lectures, entertainment, and enlightening exhibits. You'll gain valuable insight and be motivated to inform others. The Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, located in the heart of Midtown Detroit. For more information or to schedule a tour, visit thewright.org. this concept where I wanted to mold, sculpt a real hoodie on canvas. So I actually took this hoodie and it took about maybe four, three to four layers of latex to kind of mold it the way that I wanted. I had to really mold it, let it dry and stuff it and, and, and then it was attaching it to, to the canvas. When I finished it, it was the hoodie on its own and I said it was missing something and I was like, I want to add a logo to it. For some reason, something stood out to me where if I was talking about racism or police brutality or all these things, I said it needed something that symbolized our country and what it looks like today and being a person of color, a, a black person having to go through these things. So I added this logo of um, North America in black. And so this was at least three or four months before everything happened with uh, George Floyd and the protests broke out and then um, several weeks after the protests, I was on Instagram or something and I saw there was a map and they were saying, well, all of these states have come together to protest. And they were showing a diagram like of which states protested it would be in black, but every state had protested and I thought that was pretty powerful. And I had done this months before all of the protests. So then I was commissioned to do a piece um, through the Arts Council um, after the protests and the vandalizing happened downtown Indianapolis. All the buildings were boarded up. Uh, the Arts Council reached out and asked if I wanted to participate in the um, project, the Black Lives Matter movement, and do a mural. And the mural that I did downtown, I wanted to incorporate this same image, but I added a silhouette of a human being kneeling and holding a flag. So I put this same logo on the flag showing uh, a new nation and what that looks like and showing that unity and everybody was coming together for a bigger purpose, um, fighting for our equality um, and for justice. And so this piece right here has really just opened up so much for me just by a simple idea of adding one little thing to the art piece. So I'm super proud of it. My name is Rebecca Robinson, and I like to call myself a visual artist, but most recently, um, a mixed media artist. Um, I've been pretty creative and artistic um, all my life. And let's see, I went to Montessori school 
as a child. Um, not quite sure why my parents chose that direction. Um, I, I, it was a school, it's called Children's House. And it was literally a house like a large kind of mansion style house fit like you know maybe 50 kids each bedroom was a classroom and I started there at the age of four and I was at children's house until I was uh, 12 so um, it was really different for me because I did not know what the outside world uh, looked like other than what my parents introduced me to and then what I saw at school every day So I pour it, um, so I just take either cups of it um, or I put it on a, a brush and kind of dribble it. And the key to making it really work, if I put too much white, it flushes it out, it washes it out. If I don't put enough, you don't see the contrast and the negative space. So that's always a challenge to get just enough. So um, this piece right here is called World on Her Shoulders. And this is um, just an example of, you know, how I was feeling and how a lot of um, people feel right now, whether, you know, man or woman. And like Majiba said, you know, um, sometimes you get to the point of feeling like you want to give up or you're losing hope or um, you just are trying to handle way too much. And um, I felt like that a lot, just a lot of stress. Um, just not giving myself to a chance to recharge. Um, so I think this came at a time where all of those things I was feeling. This piece right here is called Prayer. Um, what I love about this piece, you know, it, it's very powerful to me because you get to a point where you have your low points, but you always have to remember about, you know, what the universe is saying and, and taking a moment to, to, to sit still and pray about, you know, the things that are plaguing you and just having that faith. Um, what's interesting about this piece, when I started pouring the white, and I just do it as a movement, but for some reason when I did it, I did this. And when I went back and looked at it, it's almost like a halo effect. I didn't plan it, I don't know why the number of rings that are in there, but it just flowed that way and it made it more powerful because it's almost like this, this entity, this bigger being, you know, just from this silhouette here of that pain that you might feel or just kind of saying, okay, now I give it all to you and then put it out to the universe, you know, so I love how that turned out. Uh, this piece right here, um, it's called Embody, and I, I love this, even though it's a, a, a young lady dancing, but I think just the image of her, her elongated self, it, it shows confidence, and her shoulders are, are, are back, and she's, she's beautiful, she's elegant. So it's kind of coming from here, and you're kind of down here, but now you've lifted yourself, and you've grown, and, I, and I'm still growing, and I, I, I love this piece. Where I am now, from here. <laughs> this piece right here is really special to me. Um, I'm, I'm a huge jazz fan. I love all kinds of music, but I love jazz music, and Miles Davis is one of my favorites. I did a, a series of concrete work with um, jazz artists. I did um, uh, Billie Holiday, Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane. Um, I did um, Nina Simone, uh, Esperanza Spalding, she's one of my favorites, and Miles. Um, when I finished this, this piece actually was at the um, museum in um, Chicago of um, Science and Industry. Um, they had something called Black Creativity exhibit every year. And I applied it maybe the first two or three years, and then my first piece that got it was this Miles Davis piece, which I'm really proud of. 
so that was my first memory of um, knowing that I was extremely creative. And um, I think once the pressure got on, you know, once I left that environment, you go to middle school or high school, and then the pressure, what are you gonna do uh, as a career? And um, I, re I really wasn't sure. I mean, I'll just be perfectly honest. Um, college definitely was on my radar, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to study, why I wanted to study it, and how was I gonna make a living doing that. And for some reason, at that time of my life, it seemed as if, if you said anything to do with art, it was taboo, like, you can't make money from that. You, you're not, that, that's not a real job. So I had a lot of insecurity about telling people I wanted to be an artist. This piece right here is called Forever. It was uh, to remember Chadwick uh, from uh, Black Panther that recently passed. I actually did this painting in about, probably about three hours before. Uh, we were set to um, bring everything to hang. And I just wanted to do something really quick. He was on my mind. I wanted to pay tribute, and I wanted to do something quick. I love abstract work, not objective work. So I did that really quickly. I love how it came out. Um, this piece right here is called Silhouette. Um, I did the background first, and I was just trying to layer. I love texture. And I was doing this outside and a leaf or something flew on there and I said, I'm not even gonna worry about it. And I just left it on there. And it just added to the piece. I like how it just organically happened. Um, the figure is in uh, pastels and chalk, which is also I did very quickly. I love uh, figurative work and I love to do um, just shapes of uh, the female uh, figure. Uh, this piece right here is called Sweet Memory. A lot of my pieces are super, super simple. Um, I like to say it's representation of myself when it comes to like the different layers that I have, like there's some mystery there. Um, I like to project that in my work, um, just showing range, just showing, you know, something that expresses you know a feeling um some type of emotion but not saying a lot and i like people to just walk away just you know um, relating to to some of my pieces in any way they want i don't i don't like to talk too much about it until after they have a chance to really absorb it and then we can kind of go back and talk about the details and things like that i graduated from Botter in Let's see, 95, and my mom got terribly ill in 90, I think it was 95, the end of 95. She had a brain aneurysm. And I had, at that time, I had an apartment with uh, one of my girlfriends, and um, I, it was one of the things I had to come home. I had to help my, my dad. I remember my dad calling me and like, you know, mommy's really sick, we have an emergency. Um, I said, well, you don't have to ask me twice. I'll go home. And I came home to really help take care of her and uh, give my dad a break. He was still working. And, um, I, you know, we thought we were going to lose my mother. But uh, she, we ended up doing, she did the brain surgery and, and um, she made it through. But she, she, it was years of her trying to recover. And I took, you know, that time to be with her. and. Um, it was really hard for me every day because I see my friends and colleagues kind of moving on and, and, and starting their lives. And I'm like, here we go again. You know, not that I would do anything different, but I just felt cheated in a way. Um, because I was like, I, what about my life? What, what, is this my life? Am I going to be stuck in, in Indianapolis? I remember my dad asking me, um, I think that following year, a couple years later, he's like, you know, what do you want for Christmas? You know, you want anything? I was like, I don't want anything. You know, I was just like, I just want to get out of here. <laughs> I don't want anything. And then I said, you know, I do want something. I want to go back to school. 
I don't know where I want to go, but I want something kind of similar to like, like my friend that was at Morehouse. I want something like that, like a college. I want to go to an HBCU. I want to be somewhere where, you know, I can be at the pep rally and make these friends and be proud to be at this historically black college. And, and my dad said, look, if that's what you want, as much as you sacrifice for me to help me and mommy, I got you back. Whatever it is you're trying to do, we're going we gonna to figure it out. I ended up applying to North Carolina Central University. And so a lot of people, even my dad was like, well, what made you do that? Well, my friend that went to Morehouse, he was from North Carolina. So I had a lot of friends that were from Greensboro and Charlotte. And I used to drive there from Atlanta a lot. So I had a little bit of a um, support system if I decided to go to North Carolina. And um, sure enough, I got accepted. This particular piece um, is called A Walk in His Shoes. And I really wanted to um, touch on the hardships of just what men go through, carrying a lot of weight on their shoulders, the responsibility that they have as men in society, um, you know, just getting up every day and having to face these challenges. And so I have this image of like this hustle and bustle in the background. Um, these silhouettes in the back kind of coming and going and it was important for me to put literally a walk in his shoes so I put, attached the shoes on here and I really love working with materials where I have to learn how to you know use uh, uh, my wood and, and drills and, and, and screws and things like that and attaching things and I had the shoes on there but there was one thing I wanted to add and that was a poem. So I, I wrote a poem on there, um, almost like a young man speaking on his hardships. And so that is this piece right here, a walk in his shoes. When I decided to really say, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't say I wanted to be an artist. I was saying I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I kept thinking, well, what encompasses that? What do, women like? What do people want to buy? What is something I can make and I can make a living? And I had the fashion background, so I said, why don't I start playing around with these handbags? So here are um, some examples of my handbags and where it all started for me with my artwork. Um, I came up with this really, really cool idea um, as far as the artwork side of it back then. I just didn't know how well I would do with just being in art exhibits and being able to showcase my work. And so much has changed in, in 20 years. But when I first started the handbags, I would paint on large murals. And um, I have a background in fashion design as well, so pattern making and um, illustrations. Um, just um, sewing construction, all of that. So I would put the pattern pieces directly on my uh, large murals and cut patterns out of it. And I started making these one of a kind handbags. So the whole concept was artwork you could carry. So each of these handbags are actually acrylic on canvas. I invented the coating that goes on it. So it took me about two years to invent the medium that I have to put on top to keep it, you know, from cracking. It's waterproof, it's fireproof. I spent years like testing it and the whole night. So I put a lot uh, into making these handbags. So the brand is called Snob and that's how everyone knew me as like the, the girl who made handbags. So just in the last, I say, six, seven years, people understand Rebecca Robinson is the same person who made the snob handbag. So it's spelled P-S-N-O-B, the P is silent. Um, I came up with that name because if you probably never recognized it, but most major brands, the names are five letters. So I won't mention all of them, but we all know our famous handbag brands and they usually have five letters and so I came up with the word snob p-s-n-o-b to kind of fit into that niche and so these are just some examples of uh, my purses so the clutches were really popular um, I was doing the wristlets I even went to the smallest detail of creating a um, hang tag that has a palette on there and um, just to, to symbolize that it, it was artwork but like I said, I think I was really ahead of my time when I came out with the bags and 
I hope to relaunch them soon. And by 2012, I probably had exhausted a lot of money, a lot of time. I was beat down. And I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I think 2012, 2013 is when my life started to change. When I put something that I love so much on hold. I didn't throw it away. I just put it to the side to focus on Becky again. So now, where, where is Becky at now? Um, and I'm and I'm tearing up not because I'm upset, but I'm so proud of her. I am. I'm so proud. because it's, it's hard to find something you love to do. And you get up every day because you love doing it. And I'm not doing it for um, the name brand or, or to be the celebrity or famous fashion designer. I'm doing it because I love to create. And um, I don't have to mention snob anymore. People are saying Rebecca's work, you know? I don't have to hide behind that anymore. And um, I don't know, I can't even say when people started really recognizing that I had something to say. Because it wasn't just, oh wow, I like her art. I think it was gradual where people were like, okay, she has something to say. And um, I think by 20, 20, 13, 2014, um, I, I'm doing some, some work, but it was colorful like normal. My handbags were always super colorful. And I was tired of it. I was going through a lot um, because I um, was just still in kind of like emotional distress because I was like, what am I doing? You know, with my life, I'm married now. You know, um, it was just a lot going on. And I didn't feel like painting in color anymore. I was done, I was tired of it. So it was almost like the same transformation. I was done with the purses. Now I'm, something is triggering me. Like everyone expects me to be so happy and go lucky and this and that. That's not how I feel. And it was just something random where I went to the hardware store and I said, I, I just want to do something grimy for a change. I want people to see, I, 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 just because you're uh, an attractive person or you're a, a bubbly or kind, and people sometimes think, well, you ain't got nothing to say, or you, don't, you, you have no worries, or your life is great. But I wanted to show, I might look one way, but my mind is thinking in a whole different direction, and somebody's going to pay attention to what I have to say. And it, it took for me to paint literally with concrete and tar before people started really saying, okay, who is this person? Because this is not the same girl that I'm so familiar with. And I, I can't even, uh, I don't even understand how it got to concrete and tar. I don't know why or how other than just God blessing me with just oh, the thought of trying to do something different or untraditional. Here we are in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, oh boy, this has been a, a radical year. <laughs> Tell me about it. In terms of protests. Let's talk a little bit about that. Would I saw an ad on, I think it was on Facebook, and something about a um, street mural. Because, you know, at this time, everybody's painting, some cities painted the Black Lives Matter on, on a, a prominent street, you know, DC and Charlotte and New York. And then I saw this ad about Indianapolis, and I was like, okay, I got to be a part of that. I don't care whatever I have to do, I want to be a part of it. So I think hundreds of people applied. They narrowed it down, I think, to like 70, 80 people. And 18 was selected. Only 18. And, um, you know, we spent a couple of weeks going over the specs and what, what, you know, what was expected of us. And we were told we could paint whatever we want inside our letter. So I said, I know what I'm going to do, you know, about how things started from the hoodie and all of us. And, and then, you know, the protesting and 
equality and, and, and justice. I'm going to put that in my letter. And I said, what is that called, Becky? What would that be if everything was just, you know, where people really did fight for unity in our country? I said, new nation. That's what that's what that looks like to me. We need to head in that direction to be a new nation. I liked where it was going, where people were coming together and listening and, and saying, let me be a part of the solution. And so my letter, I put new nation and I put the same silhouette that I put at Union Station. But then I added in there um, and um, I put on there good trouble uh, because I have so much respect for the late John Lewis. And I said, I want to show him in, in a way he had passed and I wanted to pay homage to that. Every one of us that were there painting on the ground were paying homage to, to those that were fighting for our, our civil rights. And um, that was powerful to me. And um, every person there wasn't about the money. Was it, we weren't getting paid for anything. T Tamika Catchings eventually donated funds just to pay us for our time. Nobody was asking for any money. Nobody was asking for anything. We did it because we really wanted to do it. And the vibe was nice. The energy was nice. The, the mood was nice. And then, what, a week later, someone throws paint on it? And I think I was one of the first to show up on the scene there that morning and I, I just lost it. Not, not upset because it was inevitable. It, was, it may have happened. But I think I was hurt because these are just young people out here doing something positive and using their, their gift as their voice. Why? But people are foolish. People are, there, there's people who are ignorant. But I can say this, thank you to the person who threw the paint because it backfired. And now 18, that's what our group is called, 18, um, have been uh, recognized na uh, nationally. You know what I mean? Because of, you know, people were feeling so upset about that happening to us. Mm -hmm. And it's opening these doors and, and we're, we're forming these relationships. And just like with my art collective, um, meeting Tony Radford, him picking me and, you know, eight other talents to form We Are Indie Arts. And I always give respect to that because he provided the platform for me to be able to. So now I like to give back. So now with 18, there's there's some veterans in there. Gary G is in 18 as well. But there's some people in there have been painting a while. Some people are new to this. But then that's my job or Gary's job or someone say, hey, look, what, what, what do you need to know? What do you need to learn? I'm willing to help you. I, I, I helped some people apply to the Billboard Project this year. Why, I, did, I did it already. Why can't I pass it along to the next person? So my future, when it comes to art and what my future looks like, I can't even really give you a definitive answer because I, don't, I think I don't even want to really know. I just know that there's a reason for me doing what I'm doing, being put in the situations that I'm being put in, and um, I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to create. I'm going to keep pushing myself. I never get comfortable. Anything that I make, it, 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 by six months, you're going to see something else. And then I'm going to wow you again. And I'm going to wow you again. And um, I hope I don't run out of steam. But I think life experiences and hardships and always reflecting on how you got there. For me, that's what pushes me. That's what makes me pat myself on the back. Because I have to have a relationship with myself. I, I do. I just have to have that. And um, every painting that I do, and I'm proud of, I, you know, I talk to myself and I say, you know, good job, Becky. You, di you did it again. <laughs> you did it again.